hello. In this and succeeding videos, we are going to discuss nucleophilic acyl substitution. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the hydrolysis of carboxylic acid chlorides. Recall that a carboxylic acid has the general structure where we have a carbonyl group attached to an aliphatic group R and attached to a hydroxyl group. But this combination of the carbonyl group and the hydroxyl group has special properties and we name this as one a combined group, which we call a carboxyl group. Also, when we have a carbonyl attached directly to the, uh, an aliphatic group, but then to certain other groups on the right-hand side, we refer to this as an acyl group. We also recall that one of the important derivatives of carboxylic acids has the general structure as follows, where we replace the hydroxyl group with chlorine. And this is the class of compound which we call an acid chloride. as opposed to the carboxylic acid up here. We can write a generic structure for an acyl compound as follows. So we have the aliphatic part, we have the acyl group, and then we have some sort of leaving group. Ultimately, we can replace the leaving group with a nucleophile, which we'll write as Z here, and then through a reaction which we call nucleophilic acyl substitution, we can replace the leaving group with the new nucleophile. in a process that is analogous to, but not identical to, nucleophilic substitution second order. One of the possible leaving groups that we know, we can might uh, imagine, is the hydroxyl group. But we recall from the case in nucleophilic substitution that the hydroxyl group is a very poor leaving group and that we need special procedures to remove it. We also recall that the chloride is a pretty good leaving group and generally uh, if we want to replace uh, chlorine in a nucleophilic substitution we don't need any other special procedures particularly if we have a strong nucleophile. In the case of carboxylic acids we cannot directly replace OH, as we might imagine, with chlorine. We have to use a special reaction. We react the carboxylic acid with a compound called thionyl chloride, SOCl2. And we will make a video about that soon to do that reaction in detail. But typically, if we want to replace this group, in the first step, we replace it with chlorine using a special reaction with thionyl chloride. And then we use the fact that chlorine is a very good leaving group. Once we have chlorine as our leaving group, it is pretty straightforward to then replace chlorine with some nucleophile. So the standard procedure uh, in the laboratory to be most efficient is instead of beginning our reactions with the carboxylic acid, we transform that almost immediately into an acid chloride, and then we proceed from the acid chloride to go through nucleophilic acyl substitution. If we want or need to recover the original carboxylic acid 
from the acid chloride. This can be easily achieved by reaction with water, H2O, in a reaction called the hydrolysis of an acid chloride. Not only is this an easy reaction to achieve because of the uh, uh, reactivity of the acid chloride, we also have to watch out that this reaction takes place inadvertently. So in the presence of moisture, acid chlorides will react readily with even the moisture in the air uh, to undergo this reaction. This is the basis, although not the exact details, of the reaction of tear gases. So in the use of military and police applications of tear gas, a compound that is like an acid chloride is inhaled and it reacts with the moisture in the mucous membranes of the upper respiratory system. And we'll see in the process, the irritating feature is only partially the formation of the carboxylic acid, but as a byproduct, we will see that we form hydrochloric acid, which we know is a strong acid. And if you ever accidentally inhale hydrogen chloride gas, you will know immediately that it causes intense discomfort in the upper respiratory system. We now look at the mechanism of this reaction in detail. We know that water is a nucleophile, if a weak one, and the basis of its nucleophilicity is the lone pairs on oxygen. So this is an electron-rich region which attacks the electron-deficient carbon of the acyl group. Electron flow onto oxygen. And we get an intermediate that looks like we end up with a tetrahedral transition state at the acyl carbon, which isn't acyl anymore. We end up with a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on the oxygen of, that formerly was the water molecule. In the next step, we have bond breaking to chlorine our leaving group, which leaves as chloride. At the same time the chlorine carbon bond was breaking, the lone pair, the extra lone pair on oxygen fl flowed into the carbon oxygen bond to raise the bond order from single to a double bond. So we've regenerated the double bond. We've lost chlorine as chloride as our leaving group. And we have now a protonated carboxylic acid. In the final step, chlorine abstracts one of the protons attached to the carboxylic acid group. The final products of the reaction are the carboxylic acid, and each of the particular atoms is color-coded to show from whence it came. And the other product is hydrogen chloride gas. And it's this generation of hydrogen chloride gas which allows the acid chloride to act as a tear gas, if only inadvertently. Also, very clear to show that the oxygen of the acyl group, of the carbonyl group, is not scrambled with the oxygen of water. So if you isotopically label the different oxygens, we see that the oxygen that was attached to the carbon stays attached to it as the double bond, and the oxygen that came from water is the other oxygen in the carboxylate group. For the remainder of this video, we are going to look at four specific examples of the hydrolysis of an acid chloride to form a carboxylic acid. In the first case, we look at the simplest possible acid chloride, which is, goes by the trivial name of formal chloride, which has this particular structure. 
and we're going to see that it's going to react with water H2O. When formal chloride reacts with water H2O, the products are formic acid, which is a carboxylic acid, as we expect, and the other byproduct is hydrogen chloride gas. Please see the following figures which show the computed structures for the various steps in the reaction, including the transition state for the hydrolysis of formal chloride by water. Our next reaction involves the two carbon acid chloride, which goes by the common name of acetyl chloride or acetyl chloride. And here we see its hydrolysis, its reaction with H2O water. The products of this reaction are acetic acid, which is the active ingredient in vinegar. Plus, again, we have the byproduct of hydrogen chloride gas. Please see the following figures to show the computed structures for the reactants, the products, and for the transition state in the hydrolysis of acetyl chloride. Our third reaction involves propionyl chloride, which is the acid chloride with three carbon atoms, being hydrolyzed by H2O water. The products of the reaction, as we expect, are the carboxylic acid, propionic acid, and hydrogen chloride gas. Please see the following figures showing the reactants, the products, and the computed transition state for the hydrolysis of propionyl chloride. Our fourth and final reaction involves butyryl chloride, which is this particular acid chloride, being hydrolyzed by H2O. The products of the reaction are the four carbon carboxylic acid, which we call butyric acid, as well as hydrogen chloride. Please see the following figures showing the computed structures of the reactants, the products, and the transition state for the hydrolysis of butyryl chloride.
please see the following table which tabulates the results of our calculations for the energies of activation for the transition states in these reactions as well as the overall enthalpies of reaction. I thank you all very much for your kind attention. Have a good one.